Welcome back to RPG Plus. Now the past three days I haven't had a video up and that's because I ran into some problems. For that I apologize. Basically what happened was in my recorder the audio devices to capture were just not even set like back to default and obviously absolutely no sound was recorded for, for the game or for my mic so it was completely unusable and I hadn't been able to record since, and yeah, there is why I'm behind. But let's get on with it, and I'll try to re-react to stuff that I just did recently, to the best of my ability. All right. Well, as you can see, we're on the world map, and we only really have one place to go, but we can head to the camp. So let's go ahead and go there first. You little. Are you harassing my dog? Me harassing your dog? I should say it's the other way round. Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. It was just a warning. He could have taken a hand off. Don't you think I don't know it? Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. <laughs> Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. It looks like he's harassing the dog now, though. I'd never feed you another human being. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. Look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hare is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. Lovely. Wow. Um... With the first one, it's the thought that counts. He means well. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. You heard the lady. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. That's a little harsh. Dog is too smart for his own good. He is certainly manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. Trying to find a way through the earth, are we? It's going to take some time, you know. Well, good luck with that then. I think that was it. Yeah. What do you need? Ask away. Okay, didn't have anything new. What do you wish of me? Ask you if you must. 
How did you become a shape changer? I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to what cute are we too. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. But it's just a legend, right? So I assume. My mother has walked the wilds far longer than I. Who am I to suggest what things she has done and not done in her past? Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? Can you change into other human forms as well? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. Can anyone become a shape changer? Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. If you had a notion to learn such a skill for yourself, sadly, you must remain disappointed. Do you spend a lot of time as an animal? There were nights when the wilds called to me, tis true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human. I am under no illusions to the contrary. And what do other animals think of you when you're changed? They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly will to do his duty as the as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, is even the... were I to ask. Is what she's saying bugging at times? I feel like something else was said in the middle there. Uh, I've never heard of magic like that before. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. Go with agreement here. That's good. Such traditions need to be preserved. I am surprised you think so. Still, it is a pleasant thing to hear. That's all I wanted to ask. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? The last three are terrible. I think your abilities sound quite useful. A most practical opinion. Far more so than any man I have spoken to. But enough of such talk. Let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. And six approval. What do you wish of me? If you must. Can you teach others to become shape changers? I cannot teach you, no. But any other mages that cared to learn, yes, I could do that. Send whoever you wish my way, and I shall teach them what I can in the camp. Provided they possess the will to even make the attempt. Alright. We didn't have the DLC to unlock all those. This is just the way you would get shape changers for mages. What do you wish of me? If you must. Okay, we've already gone into that. Uh, did you grow up in the Kakari Wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? But if you wanted to. <laughs> oh, what luck. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? 
A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. And you remained unnoticed? For the most part. Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Very daring. That sounds like you. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be traveling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl and naturally he was arrested. Sucked for that dude. I mean, that was quick thinking. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? Yeah, there was that manipulation she was talking about in the part with the dog. Touching? Like a handshake? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Well, I'm glad it worked out this way, at least. Yes? Let's ignore the entire Darkspawn threat and the presence of a simpleton as your only other Grey Warden ally, then. Not that I lack appreciation for the intent of your comment. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Seven more approval. She's always wanting to be on the move. What do you wish of me? If you must. Have you ever been hunted by the Chantry? My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. Really had no trouble with them. I am unsure. I was too young to understand, and perhaps it was bravado on Flemeth's part, or perhaps she was merely amused. I will never know. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait, <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Flemeth used you as bait. It was a game, and I a young girl. If I didn't get to play, I would have been very upset. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere, and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. 
mean, makes sense. Still think that was fun. I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. Right. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? Probably right. <laughs> an enlightened view, or at least an agreeable one. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. All right, two. What do you wish of me? If you must. Is Flemeth really what she seems to be? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? Uh, let's go with an old woman. <laughs> oh, she is certainly old. Have no mistake of that. Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience. I'm more interested in the truth. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. That sounds interesting. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful, a fair lass in a land of barbarian men, the desire of any who saw her. How long ago is this? Uh, yeah, just how long ago is this? Many centuries before this land was even named Ferelden. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dreadlord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osin who was her husband and Conobar, the jealous lord, who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osen agreed. Flemeth must have been angry. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. So she truly loved Osen then. That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and twas they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the Lowlands centuries later. All lies. Which, she never invaded or he never defeated her? The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner, and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. 
Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. able to go through all these. Uh, do you believe her version? I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Oft it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. How is it that Flemeth has survived for so long? The demon within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. One way to put it. Uh, the legend tells of Flemeth having many daughters. You ask if I have sisters? I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that, too. Why would she refuse to speak of them? The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. That's motherly love there. Aren't abominations usually in St. Harz? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. Hmm. All right, an interesting story, thank you. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious, nevertheless. My mother died recently, in fact. Ah, oh, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. Alright. Yeah, what I think right there, um, about her mother... In most cases, they say the abominations, well, the demons take over, and in Plymouth's case, it sounds like she actually took control of the demon, rather what than the usual way around. If you must. Alright, so that's it. Um, anyway, what approval does is once you get uh, so much of it, for example, with Alistar, I believe it would build up his constitution. You'll get a bonus to it. And I think Morgan gets magic. I remember for sure. Add our dog back to the party. She's seven. Alright. Well, let's go ahead and go to Lothering. And I expect each of you to supply these men. We must rebuild what was lost at Ostagar, and quickly. There are those who would take advantage of our weakened state if we let them. We must defeat this Darkspawn incursion, but we must do so sensibly and without hesitation. Your Lordship, if I might speak. 
You have declared yourself Queen Anora's regent, and claim we must unite under your banner for our own good. But what of the army lost at Ostagar? Your withdrawal was most... fortuitous. Calling him out. <laughs> Everything I have done has been to secure Ferelden's independence. I have not shirked my duty to the throne, and neither will any of you! The Banorn will not bow to you simply because you demand it. Understand this. I will brook no threat to this nation from you or anyone. Bantigan, please! Your Majesty, your father risks civil war. If Eamon were here... Bantigan, my father is doing what is best. Did he also do what was best for your husband, Your Majesty? Damn. Can't argue that. Wake up, gentlemen. More travelers to attend to. I'd guess the pretty one is the leader. Uh, they don't look much like them others, you know, uh, maybe we should just let these ones pass. Nonsense. Greetings, travelers! Highwaymen, preying on those fleeing the Darkspawn, I suppose. They are fools to get in our way. I say, teach them a lesson. Now is that any way to greet Thank someone? A simple ten silvers and you're free to move on. You should listen to your friend. We're not refugees. What did I tell you? No wagons, and this one looks armed. The toll applies to everyone, Henrik. That's why it's a toll, and not, say, a refugee tax. Oh, right. Even if you're no refugee, you still gotta pay. You're toll collectors, then. Indeed, for the upkeep of the Imperial Highway. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Perhaps you should charge more. Uh, you're fixing the highway, I think not. Not much gets past you, I see. It's not really a toll. We're just robbing you, see? Oh, Do shut okay. up. Even a Genlock would have understood that. Get it. I'm not paying. Well, I can't say I'm pleased to hear that. We have rules, you know. Right. We get to ransack your corpse, then. Those are the rules. All right, we have an Intimidate here. Do you really want to fight a Grey Warden? Did she say she's a Grey Warden? Them ones killed the king. Traitors to Ferelden, I hear. Turn Logain put quite a bounty on any who are found. But He's giving us some information here. Warden's good. I mean, really good. Good enough to kill a king. You have a point. Well, let's forget about the toll. We'll just leave you to your dark spawn fighting, king killing ways. Uh, persuasion. <laughs> you know, the Grey Wardens could use a donation. You don't say. He is really good, boss. Remember. Well, yes. Twenty silvers? That's all we've collected today. An excellent donation. Thank you. Uh, then take it. Uh, do enjoy your stay in Lothering and all that. Well, that's nice. You're getting ready to get robbed and you have them pay you. Him his level. Alright. Uh, Knight's Note. Unlock it. Because we got a codex. Um, yeah, I think I'll read notes too, because usually they're 
somewhat related to the quest. So many of my fellow knights have been searching for the urn. Surely one of them must have found Brother Genetibi by now. Still, until I hear that all is well, I must proceed as planned. Brother Genetivi holds the key to finding the urn of sacred ashes. We always knew this, but I believe I now know where Brother Genetivi lies. I have been to his home in Denerum and found the trail, and I am amazed that other knights have not done likewise. Unless they have. No. It is best not to get caught up in the thoughts of conspiracy. Sir Donal awaits my report in Lothering. I must go to him immediately and report what I have learned. Should anyone find these ramblings, all I ask is that he be informed of my fate. I pray that he completes what I cannot. Alright. Get right. Boss going. So you're a Grey Warden. Dangerous for you to be out in the open, no? Oh, uh, back, are you? Well, I thought we settled things nice and amicably with you Wardens. You have an intimidate, but let's ask some questions first. About what? We're just, you know, greeting travelers. Actually, it's more refugees. <laughs> yes, fine. Life's hard all over. Nothing of concern to you, Grey Wardens. You said something about Grey Wardens killing the king. Everyone's saying how the Grey Wardens betrayed the king during the Darkspawn fight got him and themselves killed. Turn Loghain pulled out just in time. First thing he's doing as regent is putting a bounty on Grey Wardens. See, there's one issue with that whole, you know, they betrayed the king part, which is the fact that they died too. I mean, at least for the most part, all of them died. All right, let's go ahead and do the intimidate. It's time for you and your men to leave. Well, uh, we don't want trouble, so, yes, we'll do that. Thank you for sparing us. But you said these refugee types was easy pickings. There are better pastures elsewhere, you fool. Uh, time to go. Well, we can definitely see which one has the intelligence of the group. They run towards the dark spawn. <laughs> 